Hello everyone, this is Carbonomics. Last week I discussed Carbon Streaming, a carbon credit royalty business, and today I will be talking about their other publicly traded peer, Base Carbon. Similarly to Carbon Streaming, Base Carbon has seen its share price decline since listing, but uh, not necessarily to the same extent that Carbon Streaming has. The company has not found itself with nearly as many issues uh, with its projects and share structure in comparison to, to uh, Carbon Streaming. As a quick disclaimer, uh, I am a shareholder of Base Carbon and Abex Technologies. Um, before I go into the company's business model, um, this company has the same operational structure as Carbon Streaming. So if you've already seen and understand uh, what the company does, um, there will be chapters in the description of the video so you can skip past this section uh, as the explanations will be the same. Uh, so. Base Carbon has been creating royalty and streaming deals in the carbon credit space. Um, now, what does this mean? Uh, this means they provide upfront capital uh, and investment into another company that's working on projects that remove or abate carbon dioxide from entering the atmosphere. In return, Base Carbon either receives a percentage of the revenues or a percentage of the carbon offsets that a project produces. A company with a royalty or streaming business model still participates in the upside of a volatile commodity like carbon credits while avoiding much of the risk because they do not have to maintain or dedicate capex to a project after their initial investment. Royalty companies also tend to have better diversification of revenue sources as they can invest in a variety of projects. For these reasons and others, royalty companies tend to have far better margins than a traditional commodity business. For example, Franco Nevada, the largest royalty company in the gold space, only has around 35 employees, has around a 50 to 60% profit margin, and the company has a market cap of $25 billion. So you can start to see why this business model is so advantageous. And now onto the management team. Um, the management team of Base Carbon has vast experience in both commodities and portfolio management, um, as well as M&A. The CEO, Michael Costa, has served as executive and head portfolio manager at CMP Funds, uh, UBS Can Canada, and Goldman Sachs Special Situations Group in Canada. One of the directors, Bruce Tozer, previously worked as the global head of environmental markets for JP Morgan. Base Carbon's senior economic advisor is David Greeley, who was previously a portfolio strategist at Bridgewater Associates, as well as the head of energy research and chief commodity strategist at Goldman Sachs. And the list goes on, right? Base Carbon is not short on commodities experience here whatsoever. But they did not have the connections in the carbon markets and royalty space specifically until they brought in the managing director of project origination, Adam Humphreys, and the COO, Philip Hardwick. Now both work at Hardwick Climate Business Limited, or HCBL is what I'm gonna call it, of which Phil Hardwick is the CEO. Uh, Hardwick brings over 20 years of experience in carbon markets to the base carbon team. Uh, HCBL has provided advising in the carbon space since the formation of the uh, European Union's ETS, which was launched in 2005. They've helped companies from uh, various deals within the carbon markets and provide base carbon with a long list of potential projects and connections to choose from. Uh, now here's a bit of a bad chart I made, but kind of gives you the, the idea here. Uh, Base Carbon plans on acquiring the entirety of HCBL and currently holds a 49.9% interest in the advising firm. Uh, this comes after the completion of phase two of the acquisition in quarter one, um, which just occurred, uh, where phase three will end in the complete integration of HCBL as a subsidiary of Base Carbon. Uh, the deal include the formation of a jointly owned entity called Base Carbon Capital Partners Corp, uh, which I'm gonna call BCCP. BCCP is the organization that is used to buy uh, the royalty streams in carbon credit generating projects on behalf of Base Carbon. Uh, now both Base Carbon and HCBL have contributed equity into the joint venture. Um, with Base Carbon owning the vast majority at a 78% interest to uh, HCBL's 22%. Although Base Carbon's interest is technically 89% because 11% of that ownership is uh, indirectly owned through its stake in HCBL. 
Uh, and of course, once HCBL is fully acquired by Base Carbon, uh, then Base Carbon will own the entirety of both entities and all credits received from the projects. Um, and that's one project or one partnership that Base Carbon has. Um, and Base Carbon also has two others, one being with Abex Technologies. Uh, it should be noted that Base Carbon was spun out of Abex Technologies, and the two companies share ties within management through the uh, CSO, Andrew Fedick, and several directors or advisors. Abex owns 15% of Base Carbon currently and owns a 2.5% royalty on Base Carbon's gross revenue, uh, and that's in exchange for the use of Abex's technology. Uh, it's all up to speculation at this point, but there is a possibility that once Abex Technologies uh, has this exchange up with LNG and potentially some form of carbon futures, um, there will be a partnership there as well. Uh, Abex has discussed creating you know, carbon neutral LNG contracts. Um, so base carbons, carbon credits could be used to offset the emissions associated with those LNG contracts. Um, but like I said, this is all to speculation, but it's kind of an assumption at the same time. Uh, the last potential partnership Base Carbon has involves its 5% ownership stake in Air Carbon, uh, which is a trading platform in exchange for carbon credits. Uh, this is speculation as well, um, but there's a uh, potential for Base Carbon to trade its credits on the platform uh, if it does not have an, any other avenues in place for uh, all of its credits at that time. Um, so several partnerships there. But moving on to the projects, uh, Base Carbon has been seemingly more careful or slower to sign deals than other companies in the space. Uh, and to be fair, at the same time, the company hasn't been around that long as it's been uh, you know, around uh, a year or less. Um, Base Carbon has two royalty streams, uh, which both involve divvying out cook stoves. Um, one is in Rwanda and the other is in Vietnam. Uh, now, the project in Vietnam, which is also the larger project of the two, uh, it involves dispersing water purifiers as well as cook stoves. Uh, the MPV of this project on its own is $76.8 million, uh, which is larger than the company's current market cap at around $45 million. Uh, the project is being developed by SIPCO, which has a proven track record um, by previously developing over 100 carbon offset projects. Uh, mainly in Vietnam as well. The distribution of devices will be finished by mid-2023, and the project is estimated to generate around 26 to 27 million carbon credits. Um, now, something different about this project that I haven't seen with most companies I've researched in the space is that this company actually has an offtake agreement already in place. Uh, and this isn't with, you know, a small name either. Uh, the offtake agreement is in place with Citigroup, which is the fourth largest bank in the U.S., But for the second project, uh, BASE has a royalty on a cook stove project in Rwanda. And this project is smaller, estimated to generate around 7.5 million carbon credits. These credits will be sold into the voluntary carbon markets, whereas the credits for the Vietnam project uh, are bought back by SIPCO or sold to Citigroup. These cook stoves are estimated to be completely distributed by the end of 2022, uh, and it should be ongoing currently. Um, the Del Agua Group, which is the developer of the project, has been in the region deploying cook stoves since 2012, uh, so this should be no problem for them, as they already have experience with this. Um, but as a disclaimer here, a general disclaimer, um, BASE falls into a similar situation as Carbon Streaming. Um, you know, they haven't dealt with the same issues that Carbon Streaming is facing in Indonesia uh, with the halting of its uh, project there. But all these projects are located in the more you know, politically risky jurisdictions. Um, so it is important that the company works to further diversify um, both its types of projects and the region of the world that they're located in. So moving on from that, uh, let's talk about the share structure a bit. Uh, management owns uh, around 12%, which we like to see. That's um, a decently high insider ownership off the bat. Um, Abex owns 15% of the company, which is unlikely to be sold, but that is a potential risk that could happen um, if, the, if the company was really desperate for cash. So that is something to look out for. 
Uh, the others category of shareholders includes Robert Freeland with a 5.7% stake. Um, and he's a well-known mining billionaire for those not familiar with the mining space. Um, so that's a pretty big investor there. Um, and a rather large percentage of the institutional holdings are nearly 20%, uh, which is very high for a micro cap. Um, so we have a rather illiquid and sticky base of shareholders in the company compared to most micro caps. Um, personally, I would actually prefer if there was less institutional ownership at this stage, um, as institutions tend to provide, you know, some of the buying pressure that you'll see um, as the company tends to get bigger in market cap. Um, but I'm definitely not going to reject the company just based off that alone. And cash as of March 31st was $42 million in USD, uh, which will have gone down as we're nearly done with quarter two. So we'll kind of have to see what their cash burn was this quarter. Um, but this is not far off from the current market cap in U.S. dollars, which is around $45 million. Um, so the company is really not far off from trading at cash, which is similar to carbon streaming. Considering base carbon raised money as the market was starting to turn, um, and that was a decent time to do so, um, it seems like now there's little risk of a possible bankruptcy or dilution for quite some time. And the net loss of the company reported for quarter one um, was a loss of 1.2 million. Um, so like I said previously, this is something that we're going to have to watch. Um, and we'll see what the report when financials are uh, reported for the quarter. Um, but as for the valuation of the company, um, you know, the price to nav of base carbon is nearly as low as carbon streaming, um, implying the company is nearly trading at a 70% discount to net asset value. This is undervalued compared to all the royalty companies outside of the carbon credit space, as you can see here. Um, some of this discount is, is fair as neither companies generated revenues or profits, but this presents a large opportunity for us um, as early investors in the carbon credit space if you do choose to invest. And a final note of caution here, um, this stock is extremely illiquid. Uh, on its Canadian listing as well, but especially its OTC listing in the United States. Um, so if you do plan on buying into the company, um, please make sure to set a limit order and not a market order, or you might end up buying at prices that you weren't expecting. Um, this volume was, was only on a couple thousand shares or less, so it's it really didn't take very much. Um, but in summary and closing on this video, um, this is going to be a company that I dollar cost average into over the next year and beyond. I already have a position and plan on adding as the stock, you know, likely falls over the coming months due to, uh, you know, the entire market collapsing in all likelihood that is what it's looking like here. Uh, as I have mentioned previously in other videos on the channel, uh, I am running on the assumption that ESG is going to return with a vengeance at some point, but I don't know when that will be right. Um, but there is, it is a difficult situation, um, similarly to the false promises made before the great financial crisis. So um, it's kind of iffy there. There are mounting environmental pressures building throughout society and large corporations and government institutions from what I've seen. Um, and base carbon is one of many ways to play this trend that I am assuming is gonna continue. Um, and something I'll continue to do as well is present viewers of the channel with more investment opportunities as I find them. Uh, but yeah, now that is the end of the video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.